Hi guys, let's talk about things that you can do with fourth and fifth grade for the whole first month of school that are great for like the back to school season that you might not use on the actual first day because you know, there's only so much you can actually do on the first day of school. So let's jump right on in with jump in, jump out. So number one is going to be jump in, jump out. This is a chant that we use this is my first day of school activity every single year with fourth and fifth grade and it's so much fun the kids go jump in jump out and turn yourself around i said jump in jump out and introduce yourself and then one kid says their name something they like and something they can do so i'd say my name is miss davis and everyone says yeah and i like ice cream yeah and i can snap yeah and then we all go all right all right all right and so we always pick things that are quick and simple and that we can all do not just that one person can do and that is jump in jump out it's always a great one this one is included in my name games presentation so you can click the link down below to grab that unless you are in the back to school boot camp if you're in the back to school boot camp then you have that free so then you can just you know go and download that from the name game section and if you haven't joined the back to school boot camp i will leave a link down below because it is everything you need to start this year off well and write so that you'll have a nice smooth year. So click the link down below. We talk about classroom management. We talk about lesson ideas. We talk about planning. We talk about all of the things that you need for back to school. So I'll link the link below. You can check that out. And let's go to number two, which is also included in the back to school boot camp, but is one of my favorites. And this is stick figure movement. This is one of those things that seems so simple, but it is so great. I forget every year how much they love it. And then every year they love it. And every year I'm like, hallelujah. So basically this is just posters of stick figures and I just hold them up and I flip through and the kids have to match the stick figures. This year I finally went and like made a whole bunch of new ones because I've been using the same like 10 forever. And so I made a whole bunch of new ones. You can grab them in my TPT shop. I will link them down below. But in there, it's so simple, but so much fun. So you can do it just by changing it. Usually I'll do like four beats per one and I'll get faster and I'll get slower and all that kind of stuff. You can also, um, one of my favorites is to flip one of them around. So it's blank. And I tell them when you get to the blank one, you can make up your own. Um, we also do it along with songs. This is a great way if you want to like play a song that maybe is a little out of their comfort zone. This is a great way to get them listening to it without like being weirded out because they're focused on what they're doing. You could also have them like make up their own compositions, give them a couple and they can like make up their own pattern to, you know, figure out like this is the order we're going to do in. And I saw in the reviews on my product that somebody said they do, they'll like play a song and the kids like move around to the song. And then when they hold up the statue or the poster, then the kids have to freeze in that position and then when they put them down they can move again which I think is brilliant and I'm totally gonna steal so thank you person um because that is gonna be so much fun um number three is another easy movement activity this is called mirror my kids love this another super simple I just say you're gonna be my mirror and we act like we're their mirror so they you know do exactly what I do and try to do it as quickly as possible to me typically I do this with them all following me and then we'll do it in partners where one person's the leader one person's the mirror and I'll give them like 30 seconds and then I'll shake a maraca or make some kind of signal and then they'll swap and so they get a couple of opportunities to be the leader or the follower you can also have them lead the whole class if you wanted to do that and I usually put on some kind of music in the background along with this so that they have you know something to move to as well um number four is composing with words so I like to kind of ease them back into you know music stuff so with rhythm specifically we typically will do some kind of like word-based composing so this year we've been using the back to school composition cards in fifth grade and then my fourth graders are going to use like planet themed ones because they we always do um planets at the beginning of the year because that's what they talk about in science so basically it's just like cards that have a picture and then they have like the rhythms attached or you can just use the picture if you want to just use the picture um and then they just make up their own pattern and then we you know say it so typically we'll do it together first i'll hold up patterns and i'll say it and they'll repeat it and then they'll get in groups and they'll make up their own patterns and play them on instruments or they can just say them we did this today and actually in third grade and it was a hit with the ocean theme ones we did in fifth grade yesterday and you know what fifth graders all all fifth graders want to do is talk to their friends so i am a huge fan of group work for fifth grade so i'm like get in groups go get in groups and do things because i just need you to like do something and they're willing to do things if they can be in groups so we do lots of group work in fifth grade um there's also other reasons i'll link a whole video down below about why i love that but composing with words so great i will leave my back to school ones down below in the description because that one's that one's was a hit for back to school this year 
The next one is the song Aquaqua. I believe this is a Jewish folk song, like Israeli folk song, um, but I also believe it's nonsense, so it doesn't matter, but it goes, Aquaqua de la Om, Aquaqua, Aqua, Tell see my trinkle, 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 la, follow, 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 one, two, three, four, five. And this is a beat passing game, so you put your hands out, one person's on top, one person's on the bottom, and then you pass the beat, they pass it, pass, 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 and whoever is landed on five is out. This one is super fun. It's also a seated game. I'm always a fan of seated games and it's just a really great time. It helps them, you know, practice the steady beat because even fifth graders need to practice the steady beat. It is fun. They love it and it's great. I don't make them sing it on like the first or second day, but I usually I'll sing it. And if you sing it enough, then they kind of catch on to at least some of the words. Next up is the song Se Se Se. This is a Japanese song. Um, this is actually a rock, paper, scissors song. So this one is so, so, so much fun. So for this one, you're supposed to do um, be in partners and go Se 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 no yoi 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 Ochalaka 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 hoi And on hoi, you do rock, paper, or scissors. Um, we actually do a slightly different, I think that's right. I'll link a video of actual Japanese people playing it. Um, we need to do it a little bit different, mostly because I discovered this during COVID. And so, you know, everything I discovered during COVID is wrong, but we tap it on our legs instead. So we just do on our legs. And jump and do either rock, paper, or scissors. So typically I'll do this the first time and we just kind of like build up. So we start with just the action and then I'll add the song and then I'll tell them it's a rock, paper, scissors song. Then I'll have them play against me. So if, I, if they lose against me, then they sit down until we get down to zero and then we'll do it in partners. So I'll just have them all find a partner and they play against that person. We usually do best two out of three and then they'll switch and find a new partner and we'll do that quite a few times. And if you really want to, then you can do elimination so that whoever loses sits down and then you get less and less people each time, which is really fun. So we can spread that over like three or four different classes, which are always my favorite things to do. Um, next up is the chant operator. I found I found this in the game plan curriculum. I don't remember if it was theirs originally or not, so I probably will not remember to look it up before I see you, but it might be from game plan. It might not be, I don't know, but I like it. So this one just goes, operator operator give me number nine and if the line is busy you can give me back my dime we pretty much always do it twice so i'll use this one and we work on ostinatos usually at the beginning of the year so we'll start by just keeping the beat and then we'll do different patterns and so typically with this one i'll do ta 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 and then the other one we do is ta ti ti ta ta ti ti ta and we do them on different places on purpose. So we'll keep the beat on the floor. We'll do ta, ta, legs and hands, and then ta, ti, ti, ta with two fingers. Um, so we work on those with hands and then we'll add rhythm sticks to them. And then I work on having one group doing one of the ostinatos, the other one doing the other. And then if you get really good, you can do three. And typically I'll do separate instruments for each of the ostinati. Asinatos. I think I looked it up and both of those were perfectly acceptable. So I don't know which one you're supposed to use if they're both okay. I don't know. But alas, you can have all of the kids doing different ones and use different instruments for each one. Um, and it's a simple enough chant that it'll get them into it. And if your kids are not wanting to sing at the beginning of the year, that's a good one to get them kind of like rocking and rolling. Um, then after that it goes to my next one, which is composing your own chant. So we'll kind of analyze the chant. We'll talk about how it has 16 beats, four lines of four beats. We'll talk about how it has like rhyming words and then I'll have them get in groups to make up their own chant. It does not have to be related to that. It can be whatever they want. And I usually give them some guidelines of like, if you don't know what to do, you could start with this and kind of change the words or you could, you know, do different things like that. So this is really fun. I usually give them poster paper so they can write out their chant really big. And it's just like an easy, fun way to get their creative juices flowing. And then I have them perform them for the other kids in the class. So easy, fun, and it's a good time. Now the last one is gonna be a song and this is the song One Bottle of Pop. I find that the sillier the song, the easier it is to get the kids to sing them. And sometimes that works even better with, like if they're in a different language, it's almost even easier. So One Bottle of Pop is a song, I don't I don't know where it's from. If you know, you can leave it in the comments. But um, we do some little actions that I learned from like choir camp forever ago. And it goes, one bottle of pop, two bottle of pop, three bottle of pop, 
four bottle pop, five bottle pop, six bottle pop, seven bottle pop pop. Don't throw your trash in my backyard, my backyard, my backyard. Don't throw your trash in my backyard, my backyard's full. Fish and chips and vinegar, vinegar, vinegar. Fish and chips and vinegar, vinegar and pop. So we'll go through this one. We'll do kind of one verse at a time and then we'll put them together because it does work as a round. And so we do this again over a few weeks. We'll learn just the song and then we'll do the song with a two part round. And then sometimes we'll stretch it to a three part round. And it's fun, it's silly, and it's a good way to get kids moving and singing because they, they just, the don't throw your trash in my backyard one gets them every time. They just think it's hilarious. So. There's a couple things you can do with your fourth and fifth grade. It is definitely not everything you can do with your fourth and fifth graders, but it's a couple of ones that I keep going back to every year. And because of that, I would recommend them because they seem to be working. That's why I keep going to them. So check all those things out. I'll leave all the links in the description and have a great back to school season. It's going to be a great year. I'm putting it out there right now. It's going to be a great year.